Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at an all new application for your Raspberry Pi called PyKiss. Now basically this is a bunch of scripts with a menu to make your life easier. The developer of PyKiss has spent a lot of time to make this work correctly on the Raspberry Pi and it'll actually work on any Raspbian based operating system like Twister OS or even Raspberry Pi OS. About a week ago, I actually had Salvador from PyLabs contact me about PyKiss because he actually posted a video on his PyLabs YouTube channel with the creator of PyKiss going over some of the features here. And overall, this is an amazing application for your Raspberry Pi. And basically, with the click of a button, you can install different games, emulators, tweaks, you can overclock your Raspberry Pi, you can install Kodi, you can turn your Raspberry Pi into a server, and there's tons of other features coming every single day from the creator of PyKiss. Now to get this installed, it's actually really simple to do. From the GitHub, we can head down a little bit here and we have an installation section. All we need to do is use the curl command to get this. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this. Open up terminal by pressing Control Alt T on your keyboard. And from within terminal, we're just gonna paste this in. It's gonna download everything we need, get it all set up. And we now have PyKiss installed. Now, if you ever want to update this, it's also super easy. So PyKiss is now located in Py, PyKiss. Now you can open up terminal from right here just by going to tools, open folder in terminal, or you can CD into this directory if you'd like to. And all you'll need to do is type in git pull. So I'm already up to date, as you can see, because I just installed it, but I definitely recommend at least checking every other day for a new update because the developer is actually going pretty crazy with this. As you can see here, the change log states that a lot of changes have been made in the last few days. So definitely keep this up to date if you want the latest features in PyKiss. So now that we have PyKiss installed, we can actually head up to our menu, System Tools, PyKiss. Now, if you don't see PyKiss listed here, I would recommend rebooting. We can head back over to Py, PyKiss, and right here, you'll have the PyKiss.sh. Double click, execute in terminal, and it'll come up. But mine is listed up here in the drop down menu under System Tools, PyKiss. So, like I mentioned, there's a lot that can be done with PyKiss here. We have tweaks, games, emulators, info, multimedia, configuration, internet, server, devs, other, and we can exit from here. From within tweaks, if we head to the first option here, CPU performance, disable Ethernet, and so on and so on. I'm just going to run through this real quick. I don't want to disable my Ethernet adapter, so I'm going to choose no. I don't want to disable IPv6. I do want to overclock my Raspberry Pi 4 to 2 gigahertz. Make sure you have a fan with this. I'll type in Y for yes and press enter. And then it's gonna walk us through some more modifications that we can do. I definitely recommend reading through each one of these before you choose yes or no. But since I've overclocked after I reboot, I'll be at two gigahertz with my Raspberry Pi. There's also a memory split in there that you can enable. And from within tweaks, we have a few others like packages, daemons, and ZRAM. We can actually set up ZRAM from right here with a click of a button, and this is really awesome. So we're gonna enable ZRAM. Do I wanna enable it? Yes. And there we have it, it was that simple. We now have ZRAM enabled. We didn't have to manually go into terminal and mess around with anything at all. We just enabled it from a simple script. So the tweak section is definitely something you wanna take a look at. Next up, we have games. So from within here, we can install a plethora of different games. I mean, this downloads everything you need. Most of this stuff is freeware. And there's one really important one in here. I really can't mention it or show it off, but this runs in OpenGL. It's the PC version, and it runs amazingly on the Raspberry Pi 4. So from here, we have Duke Nukem 3D, Revolt, Diablo, Diablo 2, Open Boar, Dune 2, Descent 1 and 2, Crispy Doom, and there's a few others in here. I'm going to go with Duke Nukem 3D. Should be an easy one to install. Choose OK. We're going to get it from Binary and it's gonna install it for us. It's gonna do all the work in the background. So now that we have that installed, we can actually go up to our Raspberry Pi menu, Games, Duke Nukem 3D. Go ahead and start it here. I'm actually gonna be running this at 720p, OpenGL, all supported devices, and we can go ahead and start. 
So here it is, Duke Nukem 3D running on the Raspberry Pi with Raspberry Pi OS. Only thing I had to do was install Pi Kiss and press a few buttons to get this up and running. And it's super smooth at 720p. I'm pretty sure this would run at full speed at 1080 on the Pi. So in order to exit, just press escape on your keyboard, use your arrow keys to go to quit game, and we're now back at the desktop. So obviously there are a lot of games in here, actually a lot of great games. Revolt, this runs great at 720p. Diablo 1 and 2 is something I would recommend installing. Diablo 2 takes about 15 minutes to get everything up and running, but it runs great on the Raspberry Pi 4, even without an overclock, but you can go through here and test every one of these if you'd like to. Next on the list, we have emulators. Now these are standalone emulators and we can kind of read through here. We have Genesis, this is gonna be the Pico Drive emulator. Amstrad CPC with the Caprice 32 emulator. SNES 9X 1.6. We also have Specky for the ZX Spectrum. DOSBox, Amiga, GBA, MSX, Pi FBA. So if you wanna run CPS 1, 2, and 3 games, you can use Pi FBA here. We'll go back, go to info. Weather information for your country. We also have a monitoring tool and a benchmark tool. You can install Linus, which is a security auditing tool, test internet bandwidth, and web monitor. So yeah, I mean, if you want to benchmark your Raspberry Pi real quick, you can run BMark from here. We'll back up. Multimedia. From here, we have XBMC 16.1, AirPlay, and Kiosk, which is a image slideshow. But if you want to install Kodi here, 16.1, Super easy to do. Use your distro as a server. Devs, we have Qt5 right here. This is a free and open source widget toolkit for creating graphical interfaces. Pretty easy on the Raspberry Pi if you want to create your own app. Something like this maybe. And we have others. Net tools part, SDL2. We can compile and install it right here. Uh, Synergy, fixes. Fix some problems with the Raspberry Pi OS. Fix SDL 1.2 black screen, and we can exit the shell here. This will bring us right back to the menu. Overall, PyKiss is definitely something you need on your Raspberry Pi, even if it's just for that ZRAM. I mean, it just makes adding ZRAM super easy. But I think one of my favorite parts about this is the game section. With Revolt, Diablo, Diablo 2, Open Board, Dune 2, and even Descent 1 and 2 easily installable from here. I mean, it's going to be worth your time checking this out. So obviously the developer of PyKiss has spent a lot of time getting all these scripts to work inside of his application or utility, whatever you want to call it. It's definitely worth giving it a try, easy to update, and I'm sure more applications and games will be added down the road. You can always check out the change log here, but I also recommend updating every one to two, three days. You can do it from the PyKiss directory just using the git pull command like I showed you in the beginning. But that's it for this video. Really appreciate you watching. I will leave links to the GitHub and the developer's Twitter page if you want to check that out. And like always, thanks for watching.